The Commuter stars Liam Neeson, directed by John McCollette Sarah, who has worked with Liam Neeson on a whole bunch of movies, Unknown, Nonstop, Run All Night, and now The Commuter. They've worked together quite a few times, and Liam Neeson's pretty much been typecasted now as an actor who is the badass old man. I mean, if you've seen the movies, if you've seen Taken, you know what to expect from these Liam Neeson action movies. This one tends to go in a slightly different direction. I'm not sure whether it should be categorized as an action schlock movie or whether to call it a suspense thriller because the movie does kind of, you know, walk that razor's edge about what it wants to be. It does have a bit of an identity crisis and there are other films from this duo that I think are better. Now, this was not a terrible movie. Some people don't like this movie. I did not despise this movie at all. I had fun watching it, but... There aren't really too many differences between this and other movies starring Liam Neeson that are suspense thrillers. This one, the big difference between this one and some of the other ones is that this one has a different setting, which is on a train. The majority of this film takes place on a train. It does not feel claustrophobic to me, but I think the major takeaway from this movie is that even though I did have fun watching the movie, there are some parts that tend to drag. There are some parts that had me kind of rolling my eyes, and there are some parts that feel very disjointed. Like I said, the movie's categorized pretty much as an action thriller, but it really kind of seesaws you as far as that genre goes. Doesn't really know what it wants to be. So the movie also stars Patrick Wilson and Vera Farmiga, which I thought was kind of funny because, hey, look, it's Patrick Wilson and Vera Farmiga. They're in a movie together that's not The Conjuring. And they do have a connection, but I'm not going to get into the spoilers about that. So pretty much Liam Neeson, early in the movie, the very beginning of the movie, they establish who he is. He's Michael McCauley. He is a former cop who now sells insurance. And the film starts out with showing him and his family. And, you know, if you've seen movies like this, if you've watched any of the classic Seagal movies or even other Liam Neeson movies, like I mentioned Taken and the other ones that were directed by Colette Serra, you've been down this road before. And they do tell you a lot about the character to make him sympathetic. He's a former cop. Now he sells insurance because he's an older guy. He's 60 years old. They do tell you a few times in the movie that he's 60 years old, which I think might have been a little bit of meta stuff, trying to tell the audience, like, look, Liam Neeson is an old badass. That's what he does. That is his typecast. I feel like that's what they were kind of doing here. So the thing is, he's a regular guy, a loving husband, loving father, but he has a really, really bad day. And this movie is pretty much his bad day. I mean, when you watch the film and you see what happens to him, it's like, damn, like this dude's day couldn't get any worse. You know, the film in the movie, the dude gets fired from his insurance job. And then you think that's like the worst thing that could happen to him. He's on a train. He's on his way back home. He doesn't know how to tell his wife or his kid that he got fired. He has not told them. And he's in his head trying to, you know, uh, rationalize what he's going to do. And then he loses his cell phone. And it's like, great, like the dark cloud is over me, you know, and you can relate to the character. So he's on the train and then something worse happens. And then the movie really kicks up. And what happens worse is that he meets this character named Joanna, who is played by Vera Farmiga. And Vera Farmiga, Joanna pretty much says, okay, look, like she comes in very creepily. And I feel like at this point, the movie really started to borrow elements from other suspense thrillers, like the game, you know, back from 1997 classic movie there. This one was not as good as the game, I'll tell you that much. But basically, the film becomes a big puzzle because she approaches him on the train. He's never seen her before, but she knows a lot about him. She knows he was a former cop, probably a former badass, and somehow she knows that he got fired from his job. It wasn't explicitly said, but it was pretty much, you know, hinted at. And she tells him, okay, look, on this train... You can make a lot of money if you do what we tell you to do, which is find a passenger on the train before the last stop. So then the movie becomes this big sort of puzzle piece. It becomes, I want to say, guess who? Remember that old board game, Guess Who? But on a train where he's trying to sort of narrow down who it could be that this person, Joanna, wants him to find. And... The thing about the film that I thought was kind of one of the better themes of the movie is that... The movie really plays with the idea of doing the right thing and doing what is right for yourself, so to speak. And what I mean by that is, in the film, at some point, he's given a choice about whether or not he should commit a very bad act to save his family or if he should 
not commit that act, possibly lose his family, but at the end of the day, do the right thing and try to unravel this big mystery because the film becomes a big conspiracy. Like as you watch the film, you start to kind of understand more and more. You peel back the layers and they start to reveal things like, you know, that this little game that Joanna's playing with him is much, 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 much deeper. You know, it's a much, much deeper game here, and, you know, it becomes pretty much a conspiracy. I mean, that's pretty much what it is. And in the movie, one thing I did like, and that's, this is because Liam Neeson's a great actor, is that he's not really sure what to do, and I thought that they really captured that. There are times in the film where he's going back and forth about what to do. Does he want to get involved in this nonsense? Does he want to move past it? He hasn't been a cop for a long time, but this is almost bringing him back into that world where he has to become a hero. Now, the movie, I thought, was a fun watch for me. I know, again, other people did not like this movie too much. I enjoyed it. I really did because I thought it was interesting as it unraveled, but it definitely does not hold up to other films that are similar to this one. You know, in fact, if you look at the catalog of, uh, of Liam Neeson, nonstop from 2014, I thought was a little bit better than this. In fact, they're really, really similar. And I think the problem with this movie is that I think parts of it do drag a bit too long. I feel like some of the issues with the writing, there's a lot of plot convenience in this film. Without going into spoilers, I feel like as you're watching the movie, and this is the problem with a lot of films. This is not something that's, just in this movie, things happen and they're almost unrealistically convenient. I've talked about this with Insidious, how, you know, there are scenes in that film that are too convenient. With this movie, it's very similar. You know, the conspiracy is almost too perfect. They have you know, the conspiracy villains, for lack of a better term, they have all these chess pieces set up and things happen to happen perfectly so they get their way. You know, there's a scene in the film where one of Liam Neeson's friends is outside and he said they tell him, look out the window and then something happens to him. And it's like, it's too perfect. And they look out the window over there, boom, something happens. Like, that kind of stuff just takes away from the suspension of disbelief to me. And, and if you do that once or twice in a movie, that's fine. But this movie does it way too much, especially at the end. Like, there's a big showdown at the end of the film, which I'm not going to spoil, where, you know, there are cops involved. And the cops that are working on this case, again, without going into spoilers, are just just so happened to be the ones that were introduced earlier in the movie and they just so happened to be in the right place at the right time and again that's just stuff that really takes me out of the film also one of the big unusual parts of the movie and I mentioned this before is that it struggles to find what this character of Michael McCauley is because as you watch the movie again it's not sure if it wants to be this action hero who's jumping from train you know Steven Seagal type stuff who's jumping from like train to train on this big you know stretch or if it wants to be just a, a former aging cop because the power scaling of the movie is weird and I hate to use that term power scaling but Liam Neeson gets into a few fights in this movie and he's not like he was in Taken where he nobody can whoop in a, in a fight no, he's actually much more human in this movie, but he also does things that are legitimately super heroic. So you're wondering, okay, is this an action schlock movie or is this supposed to be like a serious kind of realistic suspense thriller and the movie does take you out of it? Uh, a big example is there's a fight in the middle of the movie with uh, Michael McCauley, Liam Neeson and this gentleman with a guitar and the fight really just comes off like, ridiculously over the top, like, there's, you know, he almost dies, and they do some of the classic, you know, stick your head out the window when the other train's coming, like, stuff that you've seen in other films before, and also, it didn't explain how this dude was able to fight with a former cop so well, like, it, that was weird to me, you know, and it's just one of those things where it really took me out of the film, it really took me out of it, and it feels like a scene that belongs in another movie, and that to me is ultimately where the commuter fails, in the fact that the film has a real identity crisis, so when you're watching the movie, you're not really sure what to, how to digest this information, how to digest what's going on, and I think the problem with that is that the script is below average. I mean, I think the script for this movie was not, it was just not very good. And the issue is that sometimes when you have a bad script, you can make up for it with, you know, really fantastic and entertaining action scenes and great acting. And this movie really doesn't have too much of that. 
Patrick Wilson's in it, and I love Patrick Wilson. Um, and Liam Neeson, they're good actors, don't get me wrong. The performances are fine in the movie. It's just not to where it makes up for that bad script and really the narrative. It's not so much the dialogue, it's the narrative and the way that things were actually put together. But I will say the movie does have a nice message about standing up for what you believe in and when things seem like they're totally at a loss, sometimes people will stand up and do the right thing. And I don't mean just Liam Neeson's character, but it also plays with the idea that who do you trust? And even though there might be cops, you know, what cops can you trust, including ones that you're close to and things like that? And the movie plays with that, you know. But it's not the first movie to ever do this. You've seen this before. At some point in your life, you have seen movies like this before. I guarantee it. So, honestly... Even though I had fun watching the movie, there are a lot of problems and there are better movies for you to probably spend your money on, in my opinion. This is one of those red box rentals or one of the on-demand films, or if you can catch a matinee of it, it's fine. It's not one of those opening night, I must see movies. So that's my opinion on The Commuter. What did you think about the movie? I love these kind of movies, but if you want to see a movie like this that's better, check out Speed with Keanu Reeves. That's a much better version of this story. Check out Nonstop with with Liam Neeson. I mean, it's like they just said, okay, we don't want to do, we want to do another version of Nonstop, but we want to do it in a train. That's pretty much how this felt, but it just wasn't, it just didn't really capture you that well, and it just became too much schlock at the end of the day. But again, I actually, it's weird. I had fun watching it, but it's a one and done for me. What did you think? Let me know. Hope you all have a great day.